Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Century. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 5 of Longmire. So like I've been doing in the past, what I'm going to do is just talk about the entire season as a whole, nothing in any particular order. Just going to run through some things. Um, if you have not seen Season 5 of Longmire, do not listen to this because we'll be heavily diving into spoilers and stuff like that. So... Uh, even if you don't come back and listen to this, that's fine. Just If you're a fan of Longmire, go watch Season 5. It was really good, and that's just all I'm going to say on the subject. So, you've been warned, entering spoiler territory, spoiler territory now. So, let's start it off at the top of things. It's like pick, Season 5 picking up right where Season 4 left off. Someone's busting into Walt's house, and it's like, oh, who could the person be? Um was not what I was expecting it to be. Because the fact of the matter is, season four set, you know, the finale set up like, oh, it could be anyone. It could be Zach. It could be Walker Browning, which my money was on him. I mean, that's who Walt initially thought it was anyway. But it turns out none of that was the case. It was actually one of Donna's patients. Interestingly enough, Vic kind of threw that as a possibility. It was just um, Walt was so fixated on being Walker. Granted, out of anyone, Walker would want him dead. But at the same time, you know, even... Walt had to admit, there's a lot of people that would want to come after him. Vic even threw out the possibility, maybe it's someone that specifically came after Donna and that you were just kind of caught up in the crossfire, which is kind of true. What kind of happened? I don't, I don't know why I had to get all high-pitched like that. Kind of. Anyway, um, it kind of worked out. It, it, it kind of played out like that because the person ended up being Tamar Smith, one of her patients, and it ended up being because... Tamar was sexually assaulted by her commanding officer, who looks a lot like Walt. And so when she saw Walt and Donna kind of doing their thing, it just kind of triggered her memories. And it just kind of like she thought when she saw uh, Walt, especially because he looks like a commanding officer, he's a very commanding, macho kind of guy. And so in her brain, it was just like, OK, like it was like her reliving that moment. And now she sees someone that she cares about, Donna, the woman helping her through all her, you know, all, all of this, I mean, because she, like, because Donna's the only person she's opened up about that, so it's just kind of like the person that's helping her through that stuff, so she's got to go um, help her however she can. So, at the end of the day, it sucks that Walt got shot and Donna got kidnapped, but at the end of the day, she thought she was doing the right thing. She thought she was helping out someone. You know, she was very apologetic, because, you know, because at the very end of it, Walt did realize, like, you know, Donna explained what she'd been through, and it kind of clicked on Walt. It's like, a, she, was, she's a, she was a victim, and it just, like, she thought she was just doing the right thing. She didn't want someone else to go through what she went through. Like I said, especially with the scenario being that the guy, her commanding officer, Walt looks a lot like her commanding officer, so that didn't help things out. But, you know, when it was all said and done, Tamar was like, you know what, I, I'm not built for civilian life anymore. Like, she, like, barely goes out as it is, and it's just like, after this incident, she just thinks, like, there's no way she can kind of assimilate back, and just after everything that's happened to her. And she was even telling Walt to cuff her, because she's like, I don't trust myself. He's like, it's not necessary, but she's like, I... Please, sir, I don't trust myself. And the sad thing is she even tried to kill herself. But luckily, Walt and them were able to get to her. So I hope she ended up getting the help she needed. But like I like I said, I was not expecting that turn of events. I was expecting it to be like someone definitely after Walt, which like I said, to a certain degree, it kind of was. But more so that was for, for protecting Donna, not necessarily going after him. Because Walker had brought up the point when um when later on we had... um. Walt confronting him, and he was like, if it was me, I wouldn't, like, you know, try and kidnap Donna to hurt me. I wouldn't be there to hurt you. I would have killed you. I would have put you down. And I got Walt, um, Walt thinking, he's like, if that was true, like, that's, no, that is true. Like, if he had a chance, he would have made sure I was dead. He wouldn't have left it, like, half done. Like I said, for her, tomorrow, it wasn't about killing Walt. It was about just getting Donna away from him, protecting her, so. Um, a very big, but that was that. That was like, cause I was actually surprised that it ended up being kind of as short as it was, cause it's it's been a while, cause I haven't seen season four since it originally came out on Netflix. But I mean, my main reason, like, I was thinking about rewatching it before, cause I was, I found out earlier this week, well, last week at the time of me recording this, that uh, the fifth season was coming up on the twenty third, but. 
I was like, oh, I could rewatch season four, but the, in my brain, I was like, but that would mean I have to rewatch the whole branch situation. I don't want to do that because legitimately, that's just kind of one of the saddest points in the series to me. Was just like branch dying, like especially being killed by his own dad because the entire time that situation was unfolding, I was like, okay, please don't actually be branch's body. Let it be uh, some fake body. His dad set up, got the DNA and everything. It's like, come on, let him have branch locked up somewhere. I know how season three ended. The gun pointed at branch's head and he pulled the trigger, but I was still like, I didn't want it to be true. And I was like, please please and turned out to be branch and i was just so like sad about it like i mean barlow killing his own son just that was just ugh, too much for me so i mean it in itself ended up that whole situation i mean more so the aftermath the whole barlow and uh walt thing ended up playing a big part this season because the whole civil suit that was held against him the fbi cleared him of it and like you know but basically uh Barlow's estate, specifically his lawyer Tucker, is like, no, 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 it don't work like that, like, you know, we got evidence, like, basically the entire season is Walt trying to do his job while at the same time balancing the fact that there's this lawsuit against, well, civil suit against him, saying that he's not doing his job, that he cuts corners, that basically he's kind of a dirty sheriff, essentially, that basically him killing Barlow was, it was a wrongful death suit, and it's just... I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to feel bad about it because Barlow not only killed his deputy, I mean, let's say his own son, he also killed Walt's wife. I mean, obviously indirectly. I mean, directly yet indirectly because he hired someone to kill her and then he hired someone to kill that person who killed her. So, you know, but the thing is, there's no evidence of it. And it's basically Walt's word against well, Barlow's like because the whole thing is Barlow. That was kind of the reason why Barlow did what he did, because he wanted to make Walt pay. You know, it's just like he wanted uh, Walt to be in this situation, especially the whole, uh, you know, at the, the kind of stinger at the end of the season of being like, yo, because like Walt wanted to settle the case because it's like this case is screwing me over. I might have to pay $250,000 because that's how much Absaroka will cover him. That's kind of how much uh, their insurance will cover him as the sheriff. So it's like, I'll pay the maximum of that. And, you know, we could just put this all behind it because I can't do my job and have to worry about kind of walking on pins and needles because of this lawsuit. It's interfering with me doing my job right. But it turns out it's like, no, we're not settling for that. We're coming after you for everything you got. Because basically they know Walt won't have enough money to pay off the money they plan to get from him if he loses. Basically that he'll have no choice but to sell his land. And that's what they're ultimately after. Like this is kind of like one final middle finger from Barlow because he even said so himself that basically he'll see like Walt in hell but then Walt was basically like you're going to take that trip to hell by yourself like you know that he was going to come out of this all right and it seemed like he did especially with the FBI kind of covering things but I know what point I was going to make earlier because I completely uh, forgot my point that I was making earlier I'll, I'll, I'll get back to it um Basically, I was talking about the fact is that the whole Tamar situation, I thought that was going to be stretched out a little bit longer because the whole, like, Brent situation, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the last season. That's kind of the point I was making, but that was, like, half of last season, wasn't that, like, Branch's case? I think so, so. But nonetheless, like I said, that was all just, all of it was just his plan, one final middle finger to Walt, so. It sucks. Because... The sad truth that Walt learns in his season is the fact is the truth at the end of the day, Donna says it best, it's very subjective. I mean, but for Walt, it's not. Being very old school, the way he does things, he's like, no, the truth is the truth. It's as simple as that. But even with the truth on, like, you know, the, sadly, the truth can be shifted. That basically anyone can make whatever they want to be the truth, the truth. And it's kind of a hard lesson Walt has to learn, well, learn this season. And just like this... The whole thing isn't going away, especially because, like, you know, like, because he's going to trial and everything. And it seems like that's, like, because that's not been settled with. So that's definitely going to be something, a big part of next season. It's like, because even had the part where the mayor is telling him to kind of um step down. He's like, oh, I've talked to some commissioners and stuff like that. And basically, we want you to temporarily resign as sheriff. Uh, he's like, I, I think the world of you, Walt, but, you know, this whole thing, you know, I'm being up for real, I'm up for re-election, and I, uh, I got this platform of anti-corruption walks, like, wait, you know me, I've done this job for years with no complaints until this whole Barlow situation, and now all this stuff is coming up, and then it's just kind of like,
I've done it for years. But he's like, you know, I think the world of you, Walt. But you know, this it's just kind of it's kind of a bad area to be in. He's like, the moment you're cleared, I'll be qu I'm be happy to give you your job back, which is like total horseshit. He even tried to like sugarcoat it a little bit by buying him milkshakes and stuff. Talking about the fact is, anytime you know he would play football and kind of get wrecked. That basically his dad would buy him a milkshake to kind of ease and make him feel better about losing. So kind of trying to do the same thing to Walt. But it seems like it's not like he makes it seem like, oh, he's on Walt's side. He's like, oh, yeah. But it, no, obviously, I mean, when it's all said and done, it's obvious that he is just out for himself. But it also because he's also doing that whole uh, thing with Jacob in the final episode being like, you know, I can get, you know, you, I need your backing because I am running for uh, re-election. And it's like, you know, all... All that your the casino is doing for us, you know, even though it's not in Absaroka, Absaroka, it is helping us a bit. So I'd like your uh, helping and blessing, you know, when when it comes to like, um, you know, you know, backed by the monetary gain that they have from the casino. And he's like, you know, I could use your backing. He's like, but you know. It won't be for free. I can do something for you. I can get rid of the biggest obstacle that you've never been able to deal with yourself, and that's Sheriff Longmire. So he's using this whole situation, obviously, to benefit himself, making it seem like he's doing it for the good of people. But it's like, because yeah. he had basically talked about it earlier in the um, season, because basically there's a pharmaceutical dude named Dan basically wanting to move his business here, but he was re very reluctant because of the whole. Uh, civil suit against Walt. So. But it, it's it's just sad that things didn't kind of worked against Walt this season because it's just like, you, you you know he's like I try to do my job I try to I try to do the right thing but even then it just even when I try to do the right thing it just seems to blow up in his face because like with it it's literally everything went wrong for Walt. This season, because even Don even brought up a point of being like, it, has your life always been was your life this chaotic before I met you? And it seemed like it wasn't. But I think things were always bubbling under the surface. And, you know, maybe Walt was a little too blind to realize just how far things have gotten, because a lot of stuff went wrong this season. For one, the whole Vic situation, which I was surprised when she kissed him. That was crazy, especially because he like half like he woke up like partway through that. But that one kiss would come back to bite both of them in the ass, because now there's a whole thing, kind of a, a bit of like. Oh, this is a bit of a quote unquote sex scandal because it's like, oh, the sheriff is with his deputy and whatnot. So it just things got super complicated with that. Then there's the whole Henry being Hector thing, him working with Matthias. I mean, granted, Matthias had the best of intentions, sort of, because it's like, well, the laws on the res aren't all aren't always that easy to like do your job to kind of do the things you need to just because like you know take down the people you need to take down you know to do your very your job very uh effectively that's kind of what kind of like matthias doesn't cross the lines necessarily that walt does walt doesn't he does go do some very great area stuff but he does it with the best of intentions of doing the right thing but you know but that's always how he's always done his job. You know, he is a bit of a cowboy. But, you know, in this day and age, that type of thing doesn't work. I mean, it's kind of being used against him. I mean, really, all this is being used against him specifically so Barlow can screw him over one time. It's like, really? All you've done to him? You killed his deputy? You killed his wife? It's like, screw you. Just because you didn't see eye to eye because basically Walt got in his way for the operations that he wanted to expand upon. And mainly he killed Branch because Branch turned against him because Branch was... Uh, joined up with Barlow just to like you know gain evidence against him to kind of help out Walt because I think in some ways Walt was more of a father to him than Barlow was but all all of this is sprouted from that um, but uh, getting back to the point like for Henry it was kind of a heavy season too because like you know trying to get the red pony back from Malachi um, so he kind of had to make a good make a kind of deal with the devil you know like, he, he was basically being manipulated by a lot of people this season. First, Matthias is like, okay, you either work with me or I tell people that you're the Hector. I kind of hand over your DNA or your blood to the FBI with what I know about you and being Hector and whatnot. Then Jacob saying, you work with me to take down Malachi. I'll get you your um, bar, the red pony back. And then on top of that, you know, the whole thing with uh, Mingan, uh, the boy who killed himself, like, um, that just had to be especially hard because, you know, he Henry won it to um, adopt him but things didn't work out that way you know his dad had OD'd and you know that pushed Henry to take action against 
uh, that drug dealer ended up burning his entire stash, which I'll get to the whole heroin thing in a little bit. But um, on top of that, Walt figuring it all out, like, oh, Henry, you're the new Hector. Like, it was always in front of my face, but I was too blind to see it. Not not that I couldn't see it, it's because I didn't want to see it. So he's kind of lost his best friend in the course of things, too. Though, there was a little uh, toys he uh, sent to Walt to kind of make him think, like, no, we kind of making it seem like they might be able to move past this. But, you know, that was like their fight was the last interaction they had in this. And it's just kind of like, you know, for Walt, his entire world was falling apart around him. And at the same time, you have Katie. Uh, being caught up with Jacob working with him. Yes, she's doing it for the purposes of helping out people on the res, kind of giving them legal aid, because before then, they never really had anyone on their side. A lot of people didn't really trust her. It's like, well, for one, she's a white lady on her land. Um, never trust a white person kind, kind of deal. Um, but also because n when the checks went out, when the casino checks went out to everybody, oh, the checks ended up being really small. A lot of the money went towards Katie. She got about like what seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. She didn't even tell her dad just how much um Jacob had given her. You know, basically all that money was meant to be used to expense towards like um helping people out. That's what it was. I mean, she even helped out that woman Asha. And that situation turned grim. Her uh boyfriend JP that line sack of crap I love that he manipulated that situation he's like babe I'm here to get you I got this chip you know I went to an AA meeting and it's one one day chip and then you had uh Katie looking at it it's like it's a one year chip they don't give you this you know in your first day he's lying to you Ash and it's was like oh you lying sack of crap you've been found out and he was like don't worry I'm gonna prove you wrong I'm gonna get sober next time he comes back he's drunk waving a gun around and he's threatening to kill them both and then Katie has no choice but to put him down and then when he dies what does Asha do yeah she blames Katie like you killed my husband none of this would have happened if it weren't for you I just wanted him to not hit me I wanted things to be better she she kind of wanted things to be better but it, it it's kind of sad because the last time we see an interaction between them Asha's not talking to her at the same time, you're like, that's crap. Like, she protected you. He would have killed you. But, you know, Asha probably blames her. Be like, if it weren't for him, what if it wasn't for Katie, she wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. And, you know, it just, it really sucks. Like, but at the same time, you kind of understand because she loved him. And it's just like, oh, he didn't mean to beat me. He just got drunk. But that's still no excuse. But, you know... He's gone now forever, so it's like, oh, he was actually trying. He was just a little drunk, waving his gun around, threatening to kill me uh, because this is all my fault, blaming Katie. So uh, now she blames Katie, too. And cause what makes it worse is this whole situation ended up kind of putting even more of a rift between Katie and Walt. Because Walt has never been a big fan of Jacob, but especially this season, he's accusing him of everything. It's like, oh yeah, last season you accused me of killing your wife and your deputy. Now, oh, you think I'm conspiring to do all this stuff that I'm joining up with the Irish mob and whatnot, which, like I said, I'll get to that soon enough. But the fact of the matter is, the whole thing, because for Katie, Night Horse has been like, oh, very proud of her for doing the things that she's done, has always been by her side with some of her decisions. But in this season, Walt wasn't because he was so preoccupied with other stuff. I mean, granted, he had a lot on his plate. He had, um, you know, to deal with this whole Irish mob situation. He had to deal with the fact of the matter is, I have to deal with his civil lawsuit, and it just it took up a lot of his time. Plus, his distrust of Jacob, and he didn't want Katie working with him. But Katie brought it to the fact that it's like, oh, yeah, thanks for asking me about how I feel about the fact that I killed a guy, Dad. You know, Henry and even Jacob were there for me. They asked, they checked up on me, make sure I was okay. You know, Walt keeps telling her, like, he's just manipulating you. Which, I kind of see where Walt's coming from. Because, let's not forget, he is playing politics a little bit. He's like, well, to do things the way we need to do it, uh, basically, I'm going to add some people. I need some people that work here with you to be people who are connected to the tribal council. Whether they're, like, relatives and stuff like that. So, they need to be added to the role. It's like, uh, we're added to your job force. Uh, it's just politics, which I feel like I was hoping at that point she realized that it's not just politics. There's more to it than that, that she should be paying more heed to it. Like, 
I'm not saying, like, it turns out maybe Jacob's not, I'm not saying he's a very evil person, but he does have some scheme and machinations. He he is not the innocent person that she kind of makes him out to be. She just thinks it's all in her dad's head for, like, working his job for so long that he's become very jaded. He's paranoid and sees danger at every corner, but it's like, I don't trust Jacob. He's always scheming. Like, he could easily... He called upon Walt only when he thought the Irish mob was after him. It's like, there are other things. Like, if he legitimately had been very upfront and open with Walt... I mean, granted, he has his reasons for not being open with Walt. Because at the same time, he's kind of like, well, Walt doesn't ever believe me. Like, he always thinks the worst of me. And it's like, we're still not really sure, like, what really... It's kind of partly because of the way that... Jacob does business, like the whole casino thing, like Walt was never a big fan of it. He doesn't agree with a lot of the uh, tactics Jacob uses, but it's just, it's very interesting to see them at odds. And like I said, since I am skipping around and whatnot, Katie had that whole vision thing at the very end. Now, I'm interpreting that because like Katie had said a little, a couple episodes before that, that basically like she has a bad feeling that basically things are going to come to blows between her and her dad, um, between Jacob and her dad. Like things are going to come down nasty. And basically that's what it seems like that vision is representing. And you see him, um, you see Jacob with a golf club. So I'm guessing that, you know, because he's part of the whole situation that he's going to benefit from it. It's like the once moment um, Barlow's estate, you know, takes that land from um, Walt. They're going to build, you know, that golf course and stuff, you know, Tucker's ultimate plan. Well, his and Barlow's ultimate plan. But it seems like that will be where that's headed. Like that is going to be a final showdown between them. Which to me, the fact is that it's alluding to that, especially everything that's going on with Walt's job now, the whole civil lawsuit. Makes, I don't know, like I'm pretty sure this show is getting renewed for another season. I mean, really that all comes down to the people behind the show as well as Netflix on whether it gets renewed or not. But I feel like, you know, it does a good, I, I think that it, it's simple to be like, oh yeah, it's, it's getting renewed. But um, it does seem like they might be setting this up to be like, for season six to be the final season. Maybe I'm wrong, but with just everything being the way it is, the lawsuit and everything, everything's kind of coming to a head. Like that vision she had of it kind of being like a showdown. Like it seemed like it might be leading to a showdown between Walt and Jacob. And I'm thinking that's what this is all like. I think that's what a large part of season six is going to be. Obviously, a big part of it is going to be the lawsuit, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, too, because it's like, you don't want Walt to lose, but even his um, uh, lawyer, Dave, who's doing an amazing job this entire season, like, you know, he wasn't some, like, scrub. He was actually doing his job, always making sure he was doing the best for Walt, but even he was like, we might lose this. It's like, if I were you, I'd stash some money away before this all turns around, like, because there is a good chance we can lose this. There's so many, so many things. The fact is that uh, Walker Browning is like uh, for Barlow. He was uh, brought in as a character witness for Barlow's um, estate, basically saying like, oh, Walt abusing his powers and stuff like that. It's like, what about you, you, you lying piece of crap? The fact is that you were out there trying to kill a girl that your men sexually assaulted. And then you were trying to get her so you could shut her up about it. It's like, go screw yourself, you lying sack of craps. Blaming Walt, even saying like, oh, his he went out there uh, with the sole purpose of killing me. Even one of my men ended up dying. And it's like, no. For one, that was Henry on his own. Like, Walt had nothing to do with that. He didn't set that situation up. That's not how, how Walt rose. But that, with a combination of what went down with Barlow, it's just kind of like, it sets a precedent. A precedent you know, it kind of shows a pattern. And just all this crap about him doing things the illegal way. Which, like I said, he does things in a morally gray uh, route. I mean, it's this is all mainly Monty's fault because Monty was a private PI. Like my The question is, I'm wondering, was Monty hired before as a PI? Like, the whole screening process was also because of Barlow? Or was that... Because I, I can't remember, like I said, it's been a while since I season, saw season four, but he was looking for a new deputy after that whole situation got played out, after the whole Barlow thing, so I'm sure probably sometime after that, you know, they were like, oh, investigating, so I don't know, like, we did see him pop up only one time this season, but I'm just like, oh, you piece of crap, like, you kind of put this all in motion. And speaking of new deputies, he never did hire a permanent deputy. Obviously, we saw Eamon a little bit this season, um... 
I mean, first Walt got him fired uh, from his previous job, which even wasn't too sh like shook up about it because it's like, well, I was going to quit eventually because it's hard to work for a guy you don't respect. Like his boss, uh, Jim, is a bit of a jerk. Like obviously, uh, he uh, freed Walter Browning. I mean, that's kind of what the season four left you off on why you would think it was him because he he was unhandcuffed, but it's because Jim had came and got him. It's like, oh, but the fact is that Jim and his company are backing. Uh, no, um, Walter Walker and his um, oil business are backing Jim for his his campaign and stuff like that. You know, like they 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 fund him a little bit, so he ha he's very biased when it comes to that situation. So, and I can only assume Walker is going to be an issue in the future too, not just in the civil suit angle. Well, I don't know. I don't think he's going to come after Walt directly. I think he's going to use the civil suit as a chance to destroy Walt because it's not. It's not just about killing him, it's about ruining everything about him. His name, his reputation. So many other things. I, I brought it up uh, before. I was talking about the whole Vicky situation. Uh, for one, found out Vicky's divorced. Like I said, the whole situation with Walt. Uh, it's kind of sad how... Like, to me, the whole kiss thing ended up blowing up and turning into something bad. Um... It, to her, her words at the beginning was like, no, 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 that's just me moving on. But he got what was like episode three. She had the whole thing with Donna where she basically called Donna out. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't pretend like you haven't been ignoring Walt. You came here only minutes after he left. You just you want, didn't want to bump into him. It's like, how dare you do that? I don't see what Walt sees in you, but obviously he cares about you. He went through hell when, he, when, when you were missing. You, he was a wreck. And the least you can do is honor his feelings. When he's trying to call you, respond to it. That's the very least he deserves because he's a good person. He's a good guy. Um, you don't deserve him. So it's kind of like, then it was kind of obvious. It's like, no, it's more to it than that. Especially because when he was uh, calling Donna, she was ignoring his call and he was leaving a message. And you kind of see it on her face that her heart was kind of breaking hearing that conversation. It's just kind of like, it, it sucks. Like, because... She made it seem like she was trying to move past him, but it's just like so obvious that she was still in love with him. It's been, it's been a while coming. We've all seen the way she's been around him. It's like oh, so obvious that there's something there. Um, just neither one of them wanted to admit it. Part of me is always wondering why didn't Walt ever, you know, try and make something happen? And it was never really brought up. He hasn't really said anything about it, but I think the main reason why he hasn't done it is kind of coinciding with what the um, civil suit is saying that he basically abuses his power. Like, not just because of this season, but the reason why he's not done it in the past when it's been pretty obvious there's something there. And the reason is because as her boss, he didn't want to be in that position where he felt like he had power over her. It's like, you know, if they weren't working together, sure, but it's because they are working together. I feel, I guess he feels like an obligation to, like, the job comes first, like his feelings for her come second type of thing. And he, he wouldn't, he'd feel like he'd be taking advantage of her type of situation. But I mean, she's a fully grown woman. She can make her own decision. But at the same time, it's very inappropriate dating someone that works underneath you. Cause like I said, the whole power dynamic. So it's kind of like, because if things don't work out, it'd be weird and awkward. And it's like, well, you can't be my deputy. I mean, he wouldn't do that, but you know, someone could interpret it as like, well, you're not my deputy anymore. Cause we broke up. Things didn't work out between us. So bye. Um, he did kind of change, it did seem like he changed his mind because later on in the season, him and Donna, sadly, he was like, oh, I guess we found each other. We met each other at the wrong time. And they liked each other, but it does seem like Walt, I think when time went on throughout the season, Walt kind of realized his heart was kind of another place. He brought out some wine, but Vicky had already left. Vic. I don't know why I keep calling her Vicky. Do people call her Vicky? I'm trying to think about that. Like, uh, maybe that, maybe I'm just so used to when I say Vic and I'm so used to just saying Vicky, so maybe that's why. But nonetheless... Vic, you know, ended up getting pregnant this season. Um, possibly, her in her mind, the baby daddy can only be one of two people. It could either be Eamon or it can be Travis, who she had like a drunken one night stand with. Which very interesting. It's very interesting to see Travis in this season, and he's like very like he's such a lovely, uh, goofy dude. Um, but he really stepped up because I mean, for one, that whole situation with that uh, girl uh, Jewel. Uh, basically, she was sneaking out of Grandma's house, and then um, Travis chas uh, chased after her, like, as uh, uh, stopping the name of Absaroka uh, County uh, Sheriff's Department. This is a citizen's arrest. She even swung a board at him and uh, had nails in it and stuck in his arm, if I remember correctly. But him doing that, plus being there for Vic, even going to the doctor's appointment, like, when she got beat up, like, when... Um, 
Chance Gilbert's wife beat him up for um, finding that gun. I mean, after she, like that was before, oh, well, kicked her and stuff. But you know, Vic smashed her head over a rock, and she. Uh, I mean, obviously she didn't die; she got away. But nonetheless, it's like it's like whoa, 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 whoa! Your stomach is bruised. Like we need to take you to the doctor immediately. Um, it was just, it was it was very sweet, and you know, he thinks you know there's a fifty fifty chance that he's the dad, and he's like you know, I think even if he's not the dad, like he's always had a thing for Vic. He's liked her, but it's like I think. In this, you know, with the chance of it being his uh, child, like he talked about the fact this, that he was raised by a single mother and, you know, he knows how hard that can be. So he, it's like he doesn't want Vic to have to go through that. He, won't, he will be there. He even got her a little, he made a, a certificate saying like, you know, you could call it in at any time, free babysitting at no point, at any point in time you can use this and I'll come over and babysit. It's kind of, like I said, it's very sweet. Um, sadly, Vic wouldn't even tell Walt about this. Like she kept that a tight uh, nip secret. So the only person that actually knows right now, obviously her doctor and Travis. Because even Vic is unsure what she's going to do because she was going to talk to um, Eamon about it, but... You know, him being in a situation where he's like, I might get a new job, might move away from Wyoming because it's like things have not worked out for me. But he's like, I can't be sure to I can't I should be making these type of decisions while I'm on pain. So that's kind of last that we saw it. So I'm very curious to see. I, I'm, I'm you know, hopefully next season we get the idea of like whether or not like he is a dad. My money's probably betting on Travis being the dad. I don't know. And maybe that's another reason why Vic is reluctant to tell Walt because she's afraid of just because like her feelings for him and because she doesn't know that him and Donna broke up but so she probably feels like that's going to be a you know make things a little weird and awkward that he might not want to be with her if I'm not she's pregnant but it's like I don't think Walt would get caught up on something like that I mean he'll probably congratulate you and stuff like that but he does care about you I, like I said but so does Travis so if Travis finds out he is a dad he's probably going to be like you know what we should make this an official thing get married move in together stuff like that so I don't know that would complicate things a bit. And then there was that whole situation with Chance Gilbert, basically, the guy. Because at first I couldn't remember who he was. As, uh, all I saw was Peter Stormare. I was like, oh, Peter Stormare is in these episodes? That's cool. And I was like, oh, Chance Gilbert. I was like, who is Chance Gilbert? Because I wasn't 100% sure, but then they showed it. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's the dude that kidnapped him. I was basically held him hostage and stuff like that. Basically, he ended up getting convicted, even though he tried to twist everything. Be like, oh, try to use Walt's... Uh, Civil suit, as well as the fact that Vic kissed him, to kind of represent the fact is that oh, like uh, Walt didn't have jurisdiction to do what he did coming into his onto his land that Vic came on a false pretenses, even though they didn't. Like I don't remember it that clearly, but what didn't her and Sean only show up because the car broke down or something like that, and they were there for asking for help or something like that. But then he found out she's a cop and stuff like that, and just let the things kind of spiraling out of control. If I remember correctly, I don't remember. Like, she definitely didn't go there as a cop, so. But, I mean, luckily, he did get locked up 20 years to life. Oh, he, he got sentenced to 20 years for what he did. Uh, but, basically, he went to Walt being like, you know what? I need you to, like, get me put on death row. Um, someone like me can't stand being locked up. And But Walt was like, nah, you deserve to rot in here, so I'll see you in 20 years. I'm not. You're not going to get out easy for what you did to my deputy. So... Vic, wanting him dead, decides that she'll help him out, get him on death row, found the gun that he used to kill, uh, was it a census worker or something like that, and and basically presented the evidence, so he's like, okay, now I can go on death row, so, like I said, the whole situation with his wife, so it's kind of like, that's probably going to rear its ugly head next season, too, probably. I mean, granted, he's the one that asked her to get the gun, but... He said it basically the only people that would help him out in that situation is someone who hates him. And there's no one that hates him as much as Vic does. So he knows that his family won't do anything to shorten his life, you know, because they think in some shape or form that he'll get through this, that they'll, they'll find a way out of this. But for him, he's not optimistic. He thinks like things are just going to end up pretty terribly. So he'd rather go ahead and go out on his own terms than spend the rest of his life confined. So, but that's that. I also, I, I, the big part of it, I've been skating around it, talking about the fact is the Irish mob. Now, that was pretty interesting. Now, that dude, Eddie, uh, was a pretty cold customer. Like, he was very cool under pressure, the way he handled that whole situation. Um, I love that 
Walt got the dude that sells weed in this county. He's like, you know, basically, Walt lets him do that because, like, he helped out Walt's wife when she was sick, gave her weed to kind of help her with pain and everything. Got him to uh, set up the whole heroin deal. And it basically, he, while Ferg is arresting him, he's like, yeah, trying to play it up. He's like, all right, all right, Pacino, calm down. Like, don't oversell this. But basically, during that whole situation, he was very cool, calm, and collected. Um, even in a whole situation when he was um, with Ferg. And that sucked. I felt bad for Ferg in that regard, which I don't want to talk about him in a second. Uh, but, you know, being held up by those guys. And they, like, pulled out those guns. I was like, oh, crap. They're about to unload them. I was like, Ferg, no. It's like, we literally lost Branch. Do not, do not, let, do not let Walt lose another uh, deputy. Which, and since I'm speaking about this, I, I, I think I was going to mention it earlier, but I didn't get a chance to. Like, Zach, I'm surprised he didn't come up this season. He came up this season as mentioned of, like, oh, possible suspect to come on kind of came after Walt. That was kind of what the whole season four finale was kind of bringing up. But the fact of the matter is he's not popped up since. And I thought he was going to have a much bigger part. He was a deputy for a very short period of time. So, I don't know. Maybe his character was set up just for that whole, like, oh, maybe he came after Walt. I don't know. I mean, maybe when they wrote that, they really had no intention. They really had no idea who they were going to make it that was come um, that came broke broke into Walt's house. But the point I was trying to um like it's like I don't know because that deputy position still hasn't like I said been uh, permanently filled. So I'm very interested to see what whether Zach will come back next season in some shape or form, or will he ever completely fill that spot? Because I doubt there's a part of him that ever wants to completely fill that spot because it's like. I don't know, I guess no one, in a way, it's like no one can take Branch's spot place or something. Like, I don't know, that's how I'm interpreting it. But get, getting back to the point. But I was worried for Ferg, so I was like, oh, crap, dude, things look grim. But it's like, no, they beat him up and even threatened him. It's like, forget our faces or you die. And he actually did, like, he was like, Walt was like, do you even see their faces? And he's like, no, nah, it's the little cloud. And it's like, oh, Ferg. I mean, granted, you were scared like anyone would be scared in that situation, so... But then you had an FBI guy jumping down his throat, basically being like, oh, this is all Ferg's fault. Uh, this is Walt's fault for not handling things properly. Because Ferg was scared and it took him a while. He had to walk to the, um, he walked to like the next town, got to a gas station, sat there for a while. Because Walt had noticed the fo food was cold. He had been sitting there a while. He was just scared to call Walt because he didn't want to disappoint him. And, um... What it ended up happening was, like, you know, that FBI guy's jumping down his throat and everything. And the moment that's happening, I'm like, but what about you? Obviously, because it came up later on, but it's like, obviously, there was a leak in the FBI. Because the only people that knew they were transporting him were the people at, uh, you know, Absaroka, like, you know, Walt, Vic, and Ferg. They were the only, um, only ones that knew. So it's kind of like... Obviously, it had to be a leak on your side, so it's like you almost got, you could have gotten his deputy killed and stuff like that. You had to you know to jump down her throat. You're you're there chilling at the casino. It's like, you know, you suck. Is all I'm saying. And then at one point, I was even thinking maybe even the FBI guy himself, just because he looked a little cagey when he was calling someone at the phone when he got those files, you know, because Ferg had gotten Eddie's fingerprint off his badge, and I was like, yeah, you got, yeah, you got him, Ferg. I mean, that whole situation was crazy, the whole, like, mob situation of just, like, especially Shane Muldoon. Him and Walt, that little showdown they had of Walt being like, I know your real name, Shane. I won't give it to the FBI. Get the hell out of my county with your drugs and your prostitution. And um, Shane's like, I could, you know, I could kill you right now. But he's like, yeah, I know you could, but I have expressed detail. I've left details to say, like... If something happens to me, to give your name to the FBI. Yes, you could probably weather that storm, but it's a hassle that you rather not deal with. You're a businessman, you're very practical. What Shane did respond later on by showing up in Absaroka, uh, because he basically, Walt had explained that to Vic. He's like, yeah, I kind of I kind of threatened the head of the mob. And she's like, what the hell were you thinking, Walt? He's like, I just try, you know, everything... You know, he felt like he couldn't do anything because his hands were tied because of his civil suit. So he kind of wanted to take action in his own hands. And I don't know. I mean, luckily things worked out, but you end up finding out like just what I really liked is the whole Malachi situation. Obviously, we know that Malachi was working with them. Uh, Walt kind of figured it out, too. But then Malachi being a manip manipulative person, he used Walt's hate for Jacob. 
that kind of twist them to make it so it's like, oh, you backed off Malachi a little bit and put all his attention towards Jacob, especially because Jacob and Shane actually knew each other way back in the day. They kind of uh, bonded over the fact is of like, you know, their lands being taken by other people, uh, Shane being Irish and, you know. Jacob being Cheyenne, that basically they got both got their lands taken over by other people, so specifically their native lands. So, but Jacob kept saying like, "No, I'm not involved in this. You're being manipulated by Malachi. He's lying to you." It's just like so much went down. You know, Walt had his own issues with Jacob, but on the same time, he felt like Henry and his own daughter, Katie, weren't on his side in this type in this situation. So that kind of put it made it made him seem like he was losing it a bit. Like I said, I because I kind of threw out a possibility because it's like you know because basically they kicked him out the tribe, him, Henry, and Jacob. I was like, I was like, especially when he went back there when they um, when Matthias and Walt went there and it's like, oh crap. Uh, there's a sign that says Hector lives, and it's like, oh. Crap, I was like, I knew Henry didn't do it. Hen if Henry wanted to kill him, he would have done it then and there. But that's not who Henry is. But it's like, could Jacob have gone back, double back and kill him? Maybe, who knows? And then, but then I also threw out, I knew that at the time, but it ended up being truth, that Malachi was still alive. He just set it up. Like I said, he just wanted all of Walt's attention towards Jacob. But like, he's the one that reached out to Jacob to make that deal and stuff like that. Um, not less Jacob is playing the extremely long con and that this was all part of his plan, which I'm thinking less and less likely, but we do have him at the end of the season, um, grabbing Henry and leaving him out there on a crow reservation to die. I mean, that was kind of something I was going to get to is the fact is we had, um, Katie kind of seeing that in kind of her vision when she was, um, going through the sweat with Mandy. She even saw at one point, like, Mandy's in front of this puddle of blood on the floor. So it's like, all that you guys see are, like, precursors to next season. And it's just like, what that means? I don't know. Henry's situation kind of makes sense. It shows you him hanging. Not unless that's supposed to be a precursor to something else. Like, okay, like, something else is going to happen to Henry next season. Not just being in the situation he's in right now. But it's just, like I said, just everything went wrong this season it's like it's hard to say that were there actually any victories this season it just seemed like every time walt turned around he was losing was losing the trust of the, the people at absaroka um ended up losing his girlfriend this season um losing the trust of his best friend henry who's like a brother to him well is a brother to him and losing the trust of his own daughter and it's just he's in an impossible position because he's Right there at the door to losing his job, you know, for not doing anything wrong. Like I said, skated the gray area a few times, sure, which is like, well, you're kind of like, when it comes to a police, that's not the best way. But it's like, it's not like he did anything extremely wrong, but people are painting him in a bad light. And it's just, it was just one thing after another. It's just a crazy season, and I just cannot wait to see what they do. Like I said before, I mentioned way earlier, I do feel like. I mean, this might be completely unfounded, but with the way the story's heading, it's like, yo, they could be heading towards some final season stuff next week, like um, next season. Like I said, that comes down to Netflix. You know, I mean, it all comes down to whether or not they decide to renew it, which I get the feeling they will. But I could be wrong, but I highly doubt it. But it could easily be the fact of the matter is that they're like, you know, uh, Walt's job is on the line. Like, I'm very curious because to see, like, because that's another thing you have to wonder too is like, how much of a story will his civil suit be? Like I said, the whole uh, Donna situation was only like two episodes long, so. And this is me talking about the main plot stuff. I didn't even talk about the individual cases this um this uh, season because we had um the whole thing with that woman named Tiz. Her husband was falling in a hollow tree. Probably my favorite one was probably the situation with the little girl, Olivia. Basically, she killed her dad because he was abusing her mom. And she's like, don't worry, now that dad's going, you can go to the doctor and get better. Because it's like, oh yeah, you saw that the mom was kind of on drugs and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, there's something shady going on there. It's like, oh, maybe the the wife killed the dad. But it's like, no, you ended up finding out that he was abusing her and she got addicted to painkillers. Because she was like, she couldn't ever remember things. She's like, she never remembered how her daughter or her husband got home, what time they got home, because she'd always be asleep. So it's like, oh, okay, that's a little shady. But it's because she didn't want to ever be in a position where she pissed her husband off because basically he wanted the perfect little wife. Essentially, it was something wrong with his dad that basically his dad kind of um, 
I forgot what the situation was, but basically he didn't want to be like his dad. So basically he, you know, when they, he wanted to kind of keep up the appearance of everything's going right in life. But anytime something went wrong, he blamed his wife because it's like her fault. So to me, I liked that one a lot because to me it was the saddest thing because it was just like a little girl purposely knowing what she was doing because she just wanted him to stop hurting her mom and she wanted her mom to get the help she needed. That's It was, it was a sweet reason. So it's just like... There were just um, a lot of cases, um, like, uh, there were kind of small cases mixed in, like, I don't know, I, I can't remember past seasons, like, small cases, like, yeah, because most, like, most of it revolved around the main story. There was, like, only, like, two or three, maybe four cases that were just kind of, like, standalone cases. A lot of stuff dealt with stuff, obviously, that happened, you know, dealing with... Walt's lawsuit, Hector, Jacob, stuff like that, the Irish Ma, those are the, like the bigger overarching stories, and then they're just the smaller cases kind of mixed in like that. I don't know, that's, I, I've been rambling on for a while now, I just, uh, I just gonna kind of leave it at that. Michael, uh, like, not really a question, just like, tell me what some of your favorite parts, uh, might have been about this season. Like I said, I don't pass the question off, 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 off to you guys often enough so it's like tell me what you thought about the season did you like it did you not like it what some things you did like what some things you might not have liked let me know i'm very curious like i don't think there was anything i didn't really like about the season but that's just because i'm me the way i am it's like when i like something i just like it i don't i don't nitpick i don't pick apart stuff it's like i mean from a story perspective of like you know develop pushing putting myself in that world it's like oh yeah there's certain things i didn't like the fact is well kind of getting screwed over but on a, like, you know, from a show perspective, there wasn't anything I didn't like. So just, just let me know. Let me know what you thought about the season. Um, that's all. What are, what are your thoughts about the future and stuff like that? Let me know in the comments down below. But um, that's really all I want to talk about, guys. So until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, flow light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.